Welcome back, it's me Lou. For today's video, we're gonna hop back into the time machine and travel back to the mid 90s. So what we have here is a pair of very, very cool action figures. Uh, these were produced by McFarlane Toys way back when. And this is Wils Portacio's Wetworks. So if you're old enough to remember, Wetworks was a comic book published by Image Comics. Um, it was produced by Homage Studios, later known as Wildstorm. Uh, Wetworks was the brainchild of artist Wils Portacio. And it was a pretty, pretty cool book. Um, the toys were super popular at the time. Alright, so around this time period, McFarlane Toys, they were really hitting their stride with their Spawn action figures. Um, they kind of branched out from just doing Spawn, and they kind of tapped into some of the other image books, like Will Sportacio's Wetworks. And these were some incredible looking figures, especially for this time period. Um, Wetworks, it was kind of um uh, they kind of deviated from the conventional superhero uh it was very much inspired by things like arnold's arnold schwarzenegger's uh predator and like the aliens films um the focus was much more on like you know big guns and cool looking dudes versus like werewolves and vampires it was a pretty fun read i enjoyed the comic book a lot but man these toys were awesome so today's going to be a double feature as we look at um, the Wetworks character uh, Grail on our left right here. And on our right we have the Wetworks character Dozer. So the package design, it's very reminiscent of the other Spawn figures at this time. It was a large card. Um, you know, you had lightning bolts in the background, the McFarlane Toys logo in the corner. Um, you had the Wetworks emblem, the Wetworks logo. These were the ultra action figures. This was McFarlane Toys trying to set themselves apart from this, like, you know, what, what, like what Kenner or Hasbro or Toy Biz was doing. You know, they really wanted to put the emphasis on the fact that their figures were ultra action. You know, everything was like leveled up. The paint jobs, the sculpting, the detail, the accessories. And man, these figures really delivered. On the bat... On the bottom of the card, if I could fit it on here, um, you can see the instructions for each figure. So for Grail, you can put the gun in his hand. Um, he has a machete that you can put in the sheath. And he even came with um, these energy rods, which were essentially a scream of fighting sticks. Uh, the character detail was really nice. Um, you know, for a figure like this, like nowadays we'd view this as a very primitive action figure. Uh, it features probably about, if I had to guess, maybe seven points of articulation with the head, the shoulders, um, the knees, and the legs around the thighs. But the paint application, the sculpting, and detail was second to none during this time period. Um, I remember going into my local Toys R Us, and these were the figures collectors were really on the hunt for. Um, besides the other Spawn action figures, the Wetworks series was super popular. Uh, so popular, in fact, that they um, they spawned a second series uh, pretty soon after this one. Uh, here are some of the other figures in the Wetworks line. There was Grail, Vampire, and Werewolf. Uh, Werewolf was a much larger figure. The bubble was just gigantic. Um... Some of the other figures McFarlane were producing, he was also tapping into Youngblood, which was Rob Liefeld's comic. Um, and there's also the Spawn line. These were all such excellent action figures. Really, really cool. Uh, much like the older G.I. Joe figures, even got a file card here. They talk about Grail. Uh, let's take a look at Dozer real quick. Uh, much like Grail, Dozer had these excellent accessories. He had two chain guns and he had the ammo belts. Uh, much taller character, much bulkier character. Much like Grail, very limited in articulation uh, with his neck, the shoulders, and the legs. 
nice metallic finish on this guy um, on the bottom instructions and how to equip the guns and the ammo belt uh, same on the back um, you have the lineup of all the wetworks characters the young blood characters and the spawn line and then here's a bio card uh, for dozer All right, so one thing that's interesting is that the figure that was portrayed on the file card is a little bit different than the figure that came with a toy. Um, up here, you can see that his shoulder pads are much larger, and then the ammo belt feeds into the shoulder pads like that. Whereas the actual toy, um, they got rid of those giant shoulder pads. And instead, the ammo belts just kind of fed into these small little cartridges at the top. So I'm guessing that's probably like a cost cutting measure. Um, but man, I, I really wish we got this figure here. This looks a lot cooler. But I do think the final figure though was a little bit more accurate to what we saw in the comic book. Okay, so since we're looking at these figures, let's take a look at them loose. And I happen to have the figures right here. Unfortunately, I don't have their accessories on hand. But at the very least, we can at least take a look at the, the um, articulation up close. All right, so here we have Grail. As you can see, um, nicely sculpted. It's a wonderful figure. Let's open this up a little. Yeah, he has a nice muted color scheme with a silver and kind of like the grayish blue. Articulation wise, this guy's head rotates, arms rotate, um, no elbow bend, but he does have a wrist swivel, legs kick forward, knees bend, no ankle articulation, but nice figure overall. You're looking at a toy that measures in at about six inches. So that was a nice thing with the McFarlane toys. They were kind of already doing the six inch line before like Toy Biz. Uh, Toy Biz, they were still producing a much smaller action figure. And I say this all the time. Uh, McFarlane Toys, they really raised the bar in terms of what, um, you know, what we looked for in action figures. You know, everything from the paint applications to the sculpting to the detail to the accessories. You know, McFarlane Toys, they just completely reinvented the game. So there's Grail. And then over here is Dozer. Uh, as you can see, much bigger character than Grail. Uh, it's unfortunate that these figures had such limited articulation because, you know, um, it'd be amazing to like get them in all sorts of cool poses. You know, you're very limited back then about what you could do with these guys. Um, I really wish they'd revisit some of these characters and, you know, just make modern toys of them. This has such a nice uh, gold finish on them, as you can see here. You know, very limited in the articulation. You know, the engineering is very primitive by today's standards. But overall, it's a great figure. Alright, so uh, let's wrap this video up. Um, you know, if you grew up during this time period, I hope this video took you back. You know, especially if you're a comic book fan, you know. During the Image Comics uh, era, it was a very exciting time for comic book fans. You know, looking back, you know, there is some criticism criticism about the, the quality of the stories and whatnot. But, you know, what came out of it was a lot of cool toys, a lot of cool you know, characters. And I don't know, for me, it was a very, very, very fun time in my life. All right, so let's wrap this video up. Once again, my name is Lou. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you are a returning subscriber or viewer, thank you so much for your continued support. So until the next video, be safe, take care of yourself, buy lots of toys, and most importantly, be happy. And I'll see you at the next one. All right, later.